Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah
um, making sure that your light source is always consistent. So like looking at me and you now, there's shadow on your face here and shadow on your body here. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden if you put a piece of light on your shoulder here, but the shadow is there, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look yeah. right. And it's, it's all about making sure that these things look correct. You can look at things like anatomy, um, making sure that your knowledge of um, humans and animals is correct, like bone structures and muscle structures. Um, you can practice that day in, day out. There's great resources online, there's great resources in books. They've been around for hundreds of years. There's a reason why artists still use them today, because they're right. That's so interesting. I never thought about this. So you need to know how maybe a, a, the forehead's formed or a chin sure, is. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, semi, not very interesting. My dissertation at university was, that was what the entire thing was about. Wow. Um, a study of human anatomy to gain a scientific view of concept art. That was the title of it. Whoa. Okay, <laughs> nice. Uh, if you look at colour theory, you look at colours that work together, colours that don't work together. Um, you can look at, um, look, if you look at a colour wheel, the opposite colours on a colour wheel, they go great together. There's a reason they go great together. Right. There's a reason okay. they it's the same with fashion. Um, you'll see it in every. You'll this see it everywhere. Color wheel. Where do we find this? Do we just type uh, in color yeah, wheel? Yeah, type in color wheel online. Oh, you'll cool. see it. It's oh, uh, wow. the thing where it goes all the way around and it's red, <laughs> red, green, blue, blue, blue. Um, you'll see it everywhere in life. If you start to learn about these things, all of a sudden you see it everywhere. You see it in design. You see it in oh, graphics. You okay. see it. Um, and there's a reason why it works. What kind of jobs do you find yourself doing day to day? What's well, it varies wildly. Um, sometimes I'll pick up things like graphic design jobs to do logos. Um, sometimes, uh, more recently, I've had um, jobs doing comic books. Um, sometimes uh, people approach me about doing website banners and those kind of things. Um, and then, obviously, with yourself, doing things like illustrations for books and um, publishing illustrations, covers, that kind of stuff. Uh, it does. It does vary quite dramatically. The process is more or less the same for most of them. Okay. No, go for it. What's your favourite type of job? Um, definitely working within the publishing world, um, illustrating for books and covers and that kind of stuff. It's um, it's one of the jobs that I find the most rewarding, and they tend to have the most creative freedom as well. The ability to liaise with the people that you're working with and um, uh, try to get to the solution together is great. One of the most rewarding parts of those jobs. So I don't know how often you get this, but um, I was really surprised to find that um, when you'd done in illustrations for me personally, that um, you had made something that was so different to what I, I'd been imagining for all this time. You just did such a good job that um, it kind of didn't matter that, that, that it was different to how yeah. I see it. How often do you get that or do you get no? Quite, quite often. Is, and let, oh, right, if, okay, if, yeah. the, if the person you're working with hasn't given you, this is exactly what I want, then you, you have to take a bit of freedom with, um, with the things. You can, you can um, make small versions of it as much as you want um, to send to them and try to get to a solution together. Um, but sometimes you just have got to take that plunge and do something that you think is the best way forward. I mean, as a professional, you've, in theory, got a, got an idea from when you read a, when you read a script or you read a passage in a book of what's going to look best, what's going to be the most fun, what's going to be the most engaging, what's going to be the most dynamic. Mm. Um, and sometimes just putting those ideas forward to your to your client or to your boss is just the best way forward. Sometimes you get it wrong, and that's okay as well. It's like you said, and it, it's not necessary that anybody's right or wrong. Um, it's just getting to that place together where you're both happy with it. There's a couple of pieces that I absolutely love that you've done. Um, so besides doing the uh, the big dog logo, Aye. which is <laughs> yeah, cool, um, and the all know superpowers stuff, um, you've also done a couple of things that, that I absolutely love. So one of them is uh, an American singer called Paul Alexa. Oh yes. and. Whoa. I mean, that must have been some serious work. We're gonna, by the power of magic, yes. um, have the picture scroll up and down the screen now. But I mean, oh no, it was great. Wow. What it was, was that? Uh, yeah. It was a really fun project to work on. The the brief was very loose. Um, the idea of being able to see in this person's head and it being almost like a little a little eschery, um, a little, um, but just full of stuff. I hope you don't mind me asking. Mm. You don't have to answer this. Just wondering. 
how long does it take to make an image like that? Because it oh. seems super complex to me. I mean, I've always worked quite quickly as an artist. Um, that it, you really do. It's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> so um, I wonder if I can do another pitch here. I remember sending you a, a terrible pitch for Robot. Okay. And I was sat with you, and in 10 seconds, yeah. it looked like the robot. It sure. was crazy. Yeah. yeah. And no, I've always I've always had quite good draftman skills in those way where you um, where I can I can draft something quite quickly, but then sometimes towards the back end of an illustration it can take longer because of things like colour and lighting and making sure that everything works together. Mm -hmm. But that image itself, I believe it was about fourteen hours in the oh, end. Okay. Well done. It's very good. There's the book, The Curse of the Pender Witch. Oh, yes, yeah. Black and white. That, um, Funnily enough, um, I showed someone that the picture who'd seen my book and said, this can't be the same person because <laughs> um, when you're an artist, you have a style generally. Sure. And they're yeah. like, this, this is nothing like um, there's, a, there's a slightly interesting co um, concept that I came across recently where illustrators tend to fall into two different categories and um, it's either like you said one of them has a very distinct style that they go with all the time or you have the idea of an illustrator that's chameleon and can blend themselves into other people's styles and do different things on different bases depending on what the project demands. There's, I'm not saying either, either of these are better or worse than each other, yeah. but I've always found myself more of a chameleon where if somebody approached me with something and say, I need this in this style done like this, I'm like, okay, I can do that. Or, or I'll get to a place where I can do that. Uh, with The Curse of the Pendle Witch, the person that I was working with on that um, wanted something quite uh, old looking and I ended up going along the line of using um, almost like a wood carved illustration style. Um, lots of lines, lots of um, the black and white, like it, like it was a, an ink pressed illustration. Um, however, obviously it was done digitally because I'm clever like that. <laughs> So it's probably a good thing to try different styles and not just get um, caught up in your own thing all the time. Maybe take suggestions from friends, try new things, right? Sure. Different styles, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, you, it's an ongoing battle throughout your entire um, creative career of finding a style. Um, you might never find a style, and that's okay as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, try different things. Uh, if you like, if you like a certain cartoon, try drawing in that style. If you like a certain comic book, try drawing in that style. If you're into Marvel, do that. If you're into DC, do that. You will find something that you're comfortable with. But then, when you find that comfort, you then need to keep pushing, and pushing yourself out of that comfort yeah. zone and trying new things. So Andrew, I feel extremely, extremely lucky that I've got you to um, draw the pictures for my book because um, you seem to bring whatever crazy ideas I have to life completely. Um, they are very crazy. Oh, thank you. I'm going to talk some nonsense and then we, as I talk, we're going to play some of the images. Let's just see a few of those. Sure. Out of all the images, which there are many of these mm. things, um, thank you for your hard work. <laughs> that, <laughs> do you have a, a favourite or maybe a favourite two or three and then why? Definitely the Robot Daydream is one that um, springs to mind. Yes. Um, specifically as well, the when they're plunging into the water on that side of the illustration there. The lagoon. Yeah. yeah. The colours gorgeous. Sometimes you just nail something and on that one I felt like I'd nailed the colours. It looks like you're underwater looking at that scene. The second image, um, I love Boomerang from the first book. Um, 
great song as well, by the way. Um, <laughs> the way that Jay has hit the floor and the dust cloud is billowing up around him and the boomerang is spinning around his head, the action in that scene just, it, it worked. And I was very happy with how that one turned out. You nailed it with the word uh, action, it, or maybe you could use motion. It, it looks yeah. like it's moving. Yeah. Love it, great. Thirdly, probably not one that you would expect me to pick, but from the first book, uh, Flying Over London. All um, oh, right, yeah. Uh, for the reasons I was talking for before about perspective, that illustration was incredibly difficult. It probably took me the longest out of all of the illustrations in the both of the books. No, really? Um, oh. Just to make sure those buildings looked right and um, the lighting was correct on them and Jay didn't look like he was a giant swimming in the water, which is what he looked like the first few times I drew it. It was tricky, but I'm incredibly proud of that and proud of how it turned out. Here we are, inside the computer of Andrew Warman. Did I say it right? You did. Okay. The first thing that I always do when I'm planning out a new illustration is gathering reference. So generally you would have had a discussion with your client at this point and you have a vague idea of what the illustration is going to be of. If you start to then gather reference for things like the background or the characters or the props within the scene, it'll give you a way stronger idea of um, how you're going to proceed with this drawing. You can keep referencing these things throughout the whole process and make sure that you'll end up with a stronger illustration at the end of it as well. If you like a certain style or colour palette or like a shot from a film that you quite like, then you can also put these images within, in with your reference as well. My next stage is sketching and thumbnailing. Um, this is where I do multiple versions of the same image with slightly different variations or different angles or um, potentially different moods or lightings in them. I don't tend to put too much colour in these. Um, they're a good way of uh, going, doing back and forth between you and your client, making sure that you're doing the right thing and getting to a point where you're both happy before you proceed with the overall larger illustration, which will take up more time, obviously. stage when you have a solid sketch or thumbnail that you're working from you can start doing I, I start doing line art this is where you take uh, your final lines and you start to make them more cleaner this um, this stage is, can also can be where you add more detail to the picture getting solid lines at this stage will um, make sure that your overall illustration reads correctly and that when you start to add colours in the next stage everything will be clean. Having a solid foundation at this stage is very important because these are the first lines that you're putting down and people are going to see at the end of your illustration. Um, the next stage is colour and lighting. This is where you can also use your reference again. If you've gathered images of uh, colours that you like um, from different scenes that you like or different lighting scenarios that you like, you can reference these things at this stage. Practicing colour theory, it will make sure that your colours are stronger. I do like to have a colour wheel open on my second monitor just for a quick reference if I need to have a look at things while I'm choosing different colours for the image.
one of the final stages that I put in is if there's any effects within the scene, any uh, in some illustrations it's relevant to have things like dust particles and things that make the scene feel overall like it's more of um, an alive image or there's movement within the scene. And so at that point, yeah, you, um, you have a completed illustration. With that, throughout each of these stages, you can speak to the person that you're working for or working with and make sure that you're on the right track. But at this point, this is when you get the final sign-off to make sure everything's okay and you're done. Thanks for joining us today. You're very welcome. Have you got any tips that you could give everybody on illustrating? I'm going to echo a point that I made earlier, but um, practicing. Um, practicing the correct things and finding joy in practicing as well. Um, finding joy in the rep repetition, studying people that have done it before you and not getting too stuck in doing the same thing over and over again, making sure that you push yourself outside of those comfort zones and just enjoy yourself while you're doing it as well. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, so you've heard it here from Andrew Warman mm. of Andrew Warman Illustrations. <laughs> <laughs>